So as you all know by now, I'm currently at boot camp training my damn nuts off to be a marine. I'm just hoping Jeffrey can edit this video and release it on time. After all, it's no big deal, it's only Russell goddamn mania. If it's not out on time, then please just dislike and unsubscribe, I just, that's the end of my channel for good. But I doubt that's the case because I trust you Jeffrey, thank you. Anyway, Wrestlemania has been known for being WWE's biggest event of the year and it still is. Over the past 35 years, Wrestlemania has seen a lot of light, as well as its fair share of darkness. Looking at you, Wrestlemania 9. But the biggest part of the April set to happen this Sunday, what better time than now to look back and find some of the little details you may have missed. All the information in this list is as of February 4th, 2020. So if anything seems outdated, well, there you go. With that said, my name is Marv, and here are 10 things you probably did not know about Wrestlemania. Number 10, The Terrible Name. Alright, picture this. You just came up with the idea to hold a spectacle of a show and treat it as your signature event. What name do you give it? Oh, you don't know? Well, I guess to be fair, it is not an easy task to come up with a catchy pay-per-view name. Do you want to guess what the original name of WrestleMania was supposed to be? Go on, give it a try. Give up? Well, you're wrong, but don't worry, the answer is much, much worse. Vince McMahon and a group of officials had a meeting in 1984 to plan the event. They decided on the name, wait for it, and I wish I was joking. The Colossal Tussle. Oh dear. Thankfully, after some rethinking, the name was changed to WrestleMania. We have Howard Finkel to thank for that brilliant name. Imagine, you spend years training your hooters off. You go through all the blood, sweat, tears, all to reach WWE. You finally arrive and accomplish your dream of winning the Royal Rumble. You stand on the turnbuckle and point at a sign that says the Colossal Tussle. Ugh. Number 9, there was only one WrestleMania without title changes. There have been good WrestleManias, there have been bad ones. No matter the show quality, you would expect there to be at least one title change in every show. Some of them are right, some of them, eh, not so much. 34 of the last 35 WrestleManias featured at least one title change. Which was the one exception? WrestleMania 27. It wasn't particularly a good show and is often heavily criticized. One thing you might not have known is that it didn't feature a single title change. A big reason for that was because, well, there were only two title matches on the main show. The Miz and Edge defended the WWE title and World Heavyweight title respectively. Number 8, the Intercontinental title was defended once in a span of 9 years, and for 21 damning seconds on top of that. After WrestleMania 18, the IC Championship vanished from the card and remained ghosted until WrestleMania 25 and Rey Mysterio took it from JBL. It disappeared again in WrestleMania's 26 and 27 until making its return in WrestleMania 28 when the Big Show won the title from Cody Rhodes. Number 7, three men left WrestleMania as WWE, Intercontinental, and Tag Team Champion. Bret Hart was the first man to achieve this, leaving WrestleMania 3 as a Tag Team Champion. He won the IC title on Mania 8 and left WrestleMania 10 as WWE Champion. Next up was The Miz, who retained his Tag Title on Mania 26 and retained his WWE title Mania 27. He won the Intercontinental title at 29 against Wade Barrett. And finally, it's Daniel Bryan, who did it in consecutive years. He left WrestleMania 29 as a tag team champion with Kane, then he captured the WWE Championship and IC Championship at WrestleMania's 30 and 31 respectively. Number 6, The Rock didn't win the WrestleMania main event until WrestleMania 28. A year. An entire goddamn year of once in a lifetime being shoved in our throats just to have it happen again. Blah! So The Rock is solid proof that wins don't matter. The Brahma Bull is known for being one of the most charismatic wrestlers of all time, and even so, the Mania main event scene hasn't been too kind to him. He finally got his first main event victory at the show of shows at 39 years old at WrestleMania 28, defeating John Cena, and he will lose again at the following year. <clears throat> Moving on. Number 5, three men have main events at WrestleMania across three different decades. The first is Mr. WrestleMania himself, Shawn Michaels, who we all know is my king. He headlined WrestleMania's 12 and 14 in the 90s, he closed out Mania's 20 and 23 in the 2000s, and he closed out WrestleMania 26 with The Undertaker in 2010, who speaking of which is another man to do it as well. Main eventing in 97, 2008, and as aforementioned, 2010. Then there's The Rock, who closed out Mania with Steve Austin in 99, main event in 16 and 17 in the 2000s, and he pulled back-to-back -back main events with Cena in 2012 and 2013. Number 4, The Oldest Main Eventer In 2017, The Undertaker became the first man to main event WrestleMania in his 50s at WrestleMania 33. The match of Reigns was less than stellar, but what fans will remember most was The Undertaker leaving his gear in the ring, which would go down as one of the most significant Mania moments ever. Many believe this is Undertaker's last WrestleMania appearance, as it was a moment truly special where The Undertaker became Mark Calloway for that one night only. Then he returned the next year and defeated John Cena in a 3 minute match. Number 3, The Biggest Loser Mr. Hunter Hearst Helmsley has a reputation of not putting guys over when he should. So much so that it's become a meme. You know, the one of him with the shovel. 
However, it may come to a surprise that Trips himself has lost 13 Mania matches, which is the record for the most losses at the show of shows for any superstar. In second place, his fellow click makes Shawn Michaels with 11, and if you count Battle Royal matches, which I do, Big Show is also tied with Shawn Michaels with 11 losses to his name too. Number 2, The Biggest Winners Only 3 men have at least 10 Mania victories to their names. The Undertaker comes to mind first, of course, with 24 victories, a record that will never be broken. John Cena has exactly 10 victories since his first Mania in 2004, and Triple H, remember him? Biggest loser? also has 10 victories, receiving his 10th last year, defeating Batista. And number 1, Fresh Meat. It was an entry in my Royal Rumble video, it's an entry in my Mania video. On March 29, 2015, Seth Rollins became the first WrestleMania main event winner who was actually younger than the event itself. Rollins was born 14 months after the first WrestleMania, which makes him the first man younger than the event itself to come out on top at the end of the show. Fresh Meat. Reigns, who was born just under 3 months after the first WrestleMania, would accomplish this feat as well the next year. Fresh Meat. And finally, Becky Lynch, my sweetheart, became not only the first woman to win the main event of WrestleMania, but also the first woman younger than the event to come out on top in the end, who was born almost two years after the first WrestleMania. What's that? Running the video off with Becky Lynch? I couldn't be happier. Could there be anything better? Enjoy this picture of me and Becky. Fresh meat. And that's my list. Didn't miss any out? Tell me in the comments below. Any support such as liking, sharing, and subscribing is greatly appreciated. My social media links are in the description. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you.